This is Adam, and he suffers from gout. Try Urol. It helps to prevent crystallization of uric acid crystals in gout therapy. Urol, effective urinary alkalinizer for gout. Hello, I'm Kimilia, and this is Kini News. There is no political crisis in Sabah Amno, said Amno President and BN Chairperson Ahmad Zahid Hamidi. Zahid also indicated that the coalition will only decide on its allies for the 17th Sabah state election after the dissolution of the state assembly. Zahid also refuted claims that he had flown to Sabah amid a political storm in the region, clarifying that he was fulfilling an open house invite from APCO. Yesterday, Harian Metro quoted Zahid as saying that he was flying to Sabah to resolve political tension brewing in the state. It was reported that he would issue an official statement today on the situation involving AMNO, Warisan, Pakatan Harapan and GRS ahead of the Sabah polls. Sabah is due for a state election next year, although there is speculation that Sabah Chief Minister Haji Jinor might call for it this year. Zahid said that BN will be dominant with the support of other parties. And uh, we appreciate the effort taken by uh, the country parliament in unifying the effort from grassroots until uh, the uh, state level. And I reckon under the leadership of the Sri Panima Komuta, with the assistance of the Sri Panima Raman Dahlan and, and other leaders, uh, Amlo and BN, uh, will be there again, inshallah. We will be dominant with uh, other parties which also supporting us. An aide to the Prime Minister has lodged a police report to begin investigations over a movement to overthrow the Anwar Ibrahim administration. The report was made to end speculation which could cause public anxiety and affect investor confidence. Gerakan yang dipanggil sebagai langkah Dubai ini jelas adalah satu tindakan tidak bertanggungjawab yang bukan saja mengganggu gugat sistem demokrasi berparlimen malah sia-sia kerana akta anti lompat parti yang telah pun diluluskan menghalang sebarang usaha menukar Perdana Menteri dan juga kerajaan di pertengahan pentadbiran. Saya yakin gerakan ini telah dimulakan oleh beberapa orang ahli parlimen termasuk pimpinan pembangkang yang tidak bertanggungjawab. Tindakan mereka hakikatnya boleh memudaratkan demokrasi berparlimen, menimbulkan keresahan dan mencetuskan ketidaktenteraman awam. Cubaan untuk mewujudkan ketidakstabilan politik yang boleh mengancam keselamatan negara mesti digagalkan. Earlier today, Anwar dismissed Kedah Menteri Besar Muhammad Sanusi Matno's claim that the opposition has sufficient statutory declarations to topple the coalition government. Tak perlu komen. Saya kerja. Kalau ada kes isu besar, saya jawab. Kalau tak ada, saya MACC Chief Commissioner Azam Baki has confirmed that a former Prime Minister and his aides will be called for questioning. This is to facilitate investigations into the 700 million ringgit spent for publicity purposes under two previous federal administrations. Asked if the ninth Prime Minister will be quizzed, Azam answered in the affirmative but did not state when. Very soon. Lah. Very soon. How soon? Could, uh, could be uh, this week or paling lewat pun next week. Are you going to call both XPMs? Uh, they want to leave it to me. Lah. Uh, eh? Leave it to us. Uh, either one of them will be called. <coughs> we don't have uh, so much query on uh, uh, di, bagaimana ia di, uh, diputuskan ataupun diluluskan. Okay. Tetapi uh, berkaitan dengan bagaimana ia dibelanjakan okay. dan company-company yang dapat. Uh, itu penting. According to Azam, the former Prime Minister and the people from his office would be the last people to be called in for the investigation. 
Previously, Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim told Parliament that his predecessors used the sum for advertising and promotions regarding the federal government's achievements between 2021 and 2022. He claimed that the eighth Prime Minister, Mohidin Yassin, had spent some 500 million ringgit, whereas Ismail used about 200 million ringgit. Moving on to the next story, Senator T. Lian Kerr has weighed in on the exchange between MCA President and DAP leader Wee Ka Siong and Teresa Kok. While admitting that his party is at a crossroads, the former MCA Vice President said DAP's confusing position, such as attacking its allies, is the greater problem. In a statement last night, T also described DAP as the Achilles heel of the coalition government. This is because the party led by Anthony Lok is the largest in terms of parliamentary seats but is mistrusted by Malay voters. Drawn from a story in Greek mythology, an Achilles heel refers to a weakness despite overall strength that can lead to downfall. T said that was particularly noticeable when the BNPH coalition still failed to win the Malay popular vote in several by-elections since the 2022 general election. The current spat unfolded when Wee Ka Siong hit out at Theresa Kok, who labelled the BN component party as sesat or lost in its supposed attacks on her party. Kok said this in an interview with Mingguan Malaysia when she was asked to comment on DAP's current relations with MCA as parties under the unity government. We also insisted that MCA will continue to give constructive criticisms of the government, contrary to Cox's claim that his party is unwilling to work with the DAP or Anwar Ibrahim. Najib Abdul Razak wants a documentary to be taken down on Netflix as it could interfere with his 1MDB trial. His counsel is also planning to sue those who appeared in Man on the Run and implicated him in the scandal. Najib Abdul Razak is seeking for the Malaysian government to make Netflix take down the 1MDB-linked documentary Man on the Run. The former Prime Minister claimed the show was contemptuous and subjudice to the ongoing 2.27 billion ringgit 1MDB corruption trial against him. His lead counsel, Muhammad Shafi Abdullah, also informed the Kuala Lumpur High Court this morning that Najib would be filing a contempt of court application and defamation suit against former Attorney General Tommy Thomas and Sarawak Report founder Claire Rucastle Brown. Thomas and Rucastle Brown both appeared on the nearly two hour documentary and gave statements that implied Najib's involvement in the 1MDB case. Shafi also urged Deputy Public Prosecutor Ahmad Akram Garib to watch the documentary and confer with the current AG as well as the Communications, Digital and Home Ministries for the program to be taken off air on Netflix. Akram then informed Judge Colin Lawrence Aquera that he needed to watch the documentary first and then confer with the AG for the next course of action. The documentary, which began shooting in early 2022, contained an interview with Najib, who denied being involved in any wrongdoing in the 1MDB case. The former Prime Minister is on trial over four counts of abuse of power and 21 counts of money laundering involving 2.27 billion ringgit from 1MDB. Three employees with past mouthpiece, Haraka, have denied trespassing on the Selangor Menteri Besar's official residence following their arrests. One of the trio, Sufi Kamari, claimed that contrary to the police report lodged against them, they had entered the Menteri Besar's residence to fulfil an invitation. Sufi claimed that they had been invited by a representative of the conservative rights group UMA to attend a meeting between MB Amiruddin Shari and residents of Kampong Sungai Sirih Klang on land procurement for the East Coast Rail Link project. Setibanya saya di pagar masuk kediaman rasmi Menteri Besar Selangor, saya telah memaklumkan kepada pengawal yang bertugas bahawa tujuan saya datang adalah untuk menghadiri pertemuan bersama MB tersebut. Saya kemudiannya telah dibenarkan oleh pengawal untuk memasuki premis kediaman rasmi Menteri Besar. Selepas dibenarkan masuk, saya juga telah sempat berada di dalam pertemuan bersama MB dan penduduk kampung Sungai Sirih. Saya sempat masuklah dalam syarat tu. Dan saya juga sempat untuk bersalaman dengan Menteri Besar Selangor yang sedang mengetuai mesyuarat. Tiada sebarang provokasi berlaku sepanjang pertemuan tersebut. However, he claimed that an officer at the residence later accused them of trespassing leading to their arrest. Haraka Chief Operating Officer Natsi Helmi also confirmed the invitation. Lebih mengecewakan lagi, wajah mereka telah diviralkan di platform media sosial secara tidak bertanggungjawab dengan cerita dan gambaran yang tidak tepat. 
sehingga menjatuhkan air muka dan maruah mereka. Harakah sebagai syarikat akhbar sendiri telah cuba dipalitkan dengan kisah tidak tepat ini dan disyaki ada niat untuk merosakkan imej syarikat Harakah. Laporan balas telah dibuat hari ini oleh tiga staf Harakah ini sebagai tindakan undang-undang untuk mempertahankan kebenaran dan cerita yang sebenar. According to a police report lodged by the residence keeper, one of them tried to walk into the Menteri Besar's residence but was stopped by the police. After his first attempt failed, the reporter allegedly tried to sneak in by hiding inside a proton wajah which carried the two others who claimed they were going into the residence to attend a meeting. The second attempt was also foiled by the police. Prominent pro-opposition blogger Papa Gomo is confident he can prove that Anwar Ibrahim is pro-Israel after pleading not guilty to a sedition charge. Papa Gomo instead questions why he was charged under the Sedition Act in the first place. Blogger Papa Gomo has pleaded not guilty to sedition involving a Facebook post that alleged the government is pro-Israel. The accused, whose real name is Wan Muhammad Azri Wan Deris, was charged over a post on the account of Facebook user Halid Hamidi Halid Matkul on November 8th last year. According to the charge sheet, a separate Facebook user, Hisham Sharuddin, saw the post of Azri. Speaking to reporters, Azri called out Prime Minister Anwar for not keeping his promise to abolish the Sedition Act. Uh, kita semua tahu bermotifkan politik untuk menyekat kebebasan bersuara sebab pertuduhan ini adalah satu pertuduhan yang mana diletakkan di bawah atas sultan yang mana selama ini inilah yang dilakukan oleh Perdana Menteri sendiri Datuk Seri Anwar Ibrahim untuk memangsuhkan atas sultan malah tempoh hari pun beliau sendiri mengatakan bahawa atas sultan ini hanya terkait dengan mana-mana yang mengaitkan institusi gajah-gajah Melayu tapi hari ini saya dituduh di bawah atas sultan yang mana membuat satu kenyataan bahawa Perdana Menteri mempunyai hubungan uh, dengan Israel dan juga Amerika. Asri added that he is ready to prove in court that Anwar is pro-Israel and United States. Meanwhile, Asri's counsel, Muhammad Rafiq Rashid Ali, objected to a gag order preventing him from speaking on the matter, as requested by Deputy Public Prosecutor Muhammad Mustafa P. Kunyalam. Asri faces a maximum 5,000 ringgit fine or jail term not exceeding three years if convicted under Section 4, Bracket 1, Subsection B of the Sedition Act 1948. Judge and Priscilla Hemamalini allowed Asri to be released on 7,000 ringgit bail with one surety and set February 5th for mention of the case. And that is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kinitv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to malaysiakini.com. I'm Kimilia. Thanks for watching.